In this lesson, we're going to go over a few examples using parallelograms, and we're also going to explore one more property of parallelograms, and that is that diagonals are going to bisect each other. But before we get into that last property of parallelograms, I want to look over an example in which we have something like this, where we are given a quadrilateral. We know that it is joined by four line segments. What we don't know yet is whether or not this is a parallelogram. Parallelogram. The only thing that we know is that it is a quadrilateral and that opposite sides are going to be equal to one another. So we know that AB is equal in length to side CD and side AC is equal in length to side BD. Now how can we prove that this is a parallelogram? Well one thing that we can do is if we were to draw in a diagonal that is joining side CB. So let's put in a diagonal right here. What we have done by doing this is we've created two triangles. We have a triangle that is made up of CAB, and then we have a triangle that's made up of BDC. And something that we can notice about these triangles is that, well, firstly, they are going to have one side in common. Side CB is common among both of our triangles. Both of them have side CB. So of course both triangles are going to have at least one side CB that is going to be equal in length between both of those triangles. But in addition to side CB being equal in length between both triangles, we have side CD in our bottom triangle, which is equal in length to side AB in our top triangle and side BD in our bottom triangle is equal in length to side AC in our top triangle. So we actually have three corresponding sides that are equal between our two triangles. Our two triangles are going to have three sides with the same measurements. And you might recall that that is one of our criteria for determining congruency in triangles. So that is one of the rules that we discuss known as the side, side, side rule. The side, side, side rule said that when we have three corresponding sides that are equal between two triangles, the triangles are congruent. And that means that triangle CAB is congruent to triangle BDC. And what is another thing that we know about congruent triangles? We know that congruent triangles are going to have corresponding side lengths equal and corresponding angles equal. And we've already got that these corresponding side lengths are equal. That's how we knew that our triangles were congruent. But what we haven't put into our diagram here is that corresponding angles have to be equal. So because these triangles are congruent, we know that angle A is going to be equal to angle D. So we know that angle A is going to be equal to angle D. We can put that in here. Well, we should actually just label this. I'm going to label this C1 and C2 and this B1 and B2. So we first know that angle A is equal to angle D. Those are the corresponding angles between our two congruent triangles. The corresponding angle for angle C1 is going to be angle B1. So we know that angle C1 is going to be equal to angle B1. And we also know that angle C2 is going to be equal to angle B2. Those are the corresponding angles on our two congruent triangles. So we know C2 is going to be equal to angle B2. So now that we have got those in, what we can notice is that if we look at this diagonal line that we drew in in orange, this line CB, CB can be thought of as a transversal. We can see that it is cutting through these lines, which right now we don't know whether or not they're parallel lines. That's one thing we're trying to prove. 
But what we do know is that we, when we have a transversal cutting through lines like this, we create certain angles. And one thing that we can notice is that over here, C2 and B2 are alternate interior angles. And similarly, C1 and B1 are also alternate interior angles. And when alternate interior angles are congruent, we know that our lines are parallel. So we can have a situation in which alternate interior angles are not congruent and then we can know that our lines are not parallel lines but we know that if our lines are parallel lines alternate interior angles are going to be congruent and that is exactly what's happening over here we know that b2 and c2 are alternate interior angles they are on the inside of these lines and on opposite sides of the transversal and they are congruent therefore we know that ab is parallel to cd Similarly, if we look at these two lines, these are also alternate interior angles. They are on opposite sides of the transversal and between our two lines. So these are also alternate interior angles and we know that they are equal, they are congruent. Therefore, AC is parallel to BD. So what we have just proven is that AC and BD are parallel lines and AB and CD are also parallel lines. So we have just proven that these are going to be parallel to one another and thus we do have a parallelogram. So I'll just make a note of that here, that AB is parallel to CD because our alternate interior angles are congruent and for the same reason, AC is parallel to BD. And I'm just going to put this here because it is the same reason. Alternate interior angles are congruent, therefore AC is also parallel to BD.